to NURFM.com, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. To NURFM, it's Dusty Springfield with Wishing and Hopin'. And if you've been wishing and hoping for a diamond, then wish and hope no more. We might have a slightly specked up, teched up way to get one. It might not be the romantic way. But Professor John O'Connor, who's not short on romance, might I say, but he's here to tell us about these new kinds of carbon. Professor John O'Connor from University of Newcastle. I love it when you bring some bling. <laughs> yes, it is great, Meryl. And uh, this is uh, really interesting. It's And carbon never ceases to amaze us. And, and it just, you know, the discoveries keep going. Most people will know about diamonds and about graphite, that horrible black stuff. That, mm. you know, both of them are, are pure carbon. So the same element can make two totally different materials. It's not as if there are extra chemicals involved. They're both pure carbon. They've just got a different solid structure. And, and of course, carbon forms the basis of all the organic things around us, including ourselves. So there are millions of compounds that involve carbon. But the thing is that over the last couple of decades, we've found new things about carbon. About 20 years back, we found things called buckyballs, which are basically the short form of Buckminster fullerenes. Uh, and that's a fancy way of talking about a soccer ball made out of carbon atoms. It's, it, it's a 60 atoms, just like a soccer ball. And then after that, they found you could make tubes of carbon and uh, you could actually also make um, other balls other than 60. And then only a few years back, they discovered a thing called graphene, which was a single sheet of graphite. All of these have really interesting properties, and you think, okay, when is it going to stop? Well, it's not stopped yet because just recently in the uh, Journal of Applied Physics, uh, there was a group from North uh, Carolina State University who reported they've found, they made films which are yet another form of solid carbon. Now, these films are, are, are different again. First off, they're harder than carbon, which is pretty spectacular. Secondly, they're ferromagnetic. In other words... You know, like nails, you can pick up with a magnet. Now, carbon isn't magnetic. I was, I was going to say, hang on, yeah. I'm following now, but carbon is not magnetic, You is don't it? pick up diamonds with magnets and you don't pick up graphite uh, with Nails magnets. with diamonds. So, 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 so it's really interesting because um, it has these special properties, but this has been made, again, by a special way, and, and this is the, the really interesting things. What they've done is they've laid out a, a film of carbon on, on a surface, and the surface, it, it, there are different types of surfaces. There are you know, things like sapphire and and alumina and so forth, glass, plastic, polymer. But they lay down a film of carbon and they hit it with a, a very short, very intense laser pulse. Now, what seems to be happening is it's being, it's, it's raised up to 4,000 degrees. Uh, it's becoming instantly a liquid, but then it quickly cools down. Now, liquid carbon is something you don't find except in the cores of, of you know, stars or something. Planets and things. Um, so, so this is for a very short period of time in, in a very unstable, unrealistic state. And it cools down quickly and it forms this thing called Q-carbon. And it has all of these special properties. It has um, super hard, it's ferromagnetic. And all of, both of those seem to be properties we would be very interested in. And if it's ferromagnetic, maybe it could be a the basis of future memories for us, you know, where instead of a computer disk made of of, uh, of other material, magnetic type materials, it could be made of carbon. Um, but the other thing too about this is that it's been shown that if they t if they, they they tinker a little bit with the the operating conditions, they can convert this Q carbon into diamonds, small diamonds. Now you might think, if you've got something which is so fantastic, why do you want to go to something that we already know? And the answer is that. It's making nano diamonds, diamonds which are only a few nanometers across, or, or nano needles of diamond. Now these these have other these are not always easy to make. They can be made by other other routes, but we know what nano diamond can do. It's been uh, it's been trialled in, in uh, treatments for cancer. Uh, this involves using nano diamonds and lasers rather than radiation. Uh, and so, so is that where they inject the diamond into you and then they hit it with the laser? So it's very, very precise. So the idea is that the diamond would go to where the um, cancer, where, where the cells were. cancer is and then by hitting it with a laser beam, you heat up just that spot. Just those because cells. The, because the diamond absorbs in that particular wavelength. So just the diamond would heat up, the diamond would kill the cell, and yeah. So uh, another route to make these, these very small diamonds would be very useful. So... That there, that's the first thing that comes off the top of my head. But uh, you know, memories, uh, super hard films. I mean, her films harder than diamond. I mean, people already get very hard films put on glasses. But I'm sure there are many other situations where they want even harder films, where the environment is is more aggressive. And so, yes, there's an opportunity to make really hard films. 
but on the, the issue that it's ferromagnetic is the thing that really blows me away. There's, there's, there's sure to be some great high-tech uh, applications for this in the future. It'll be part of your mobile phone, your computer, your your recording device, uh, you know, the, the, the cameras we use for recording these things. I'm sure there are going to be applications that we haven't even thought of yet. Mm. The beauty of these materials is they give us opportunities. When you say you're talking in, in nanos, what is it? A human hair is like 60,000 nanometers, and, and you're talking like in the hundreds. So In the ones. In the ones. It's and tens, yes. It's finer than – that. the mind just boggles for well, me, John, at how they even work with things that are so minute. But we do it all the time because basically they're like a large molecule. Yeah. So it's just that we have created this molecule in a, of something that is not normally that size. So diamonds, yes, you usually find much bigger, but we now have the technology to make them the nanoscale and it has special properties. As you go from an atom to a solid, the, the properties of an atom are different to those of a solid. And somewhere in between is the nanoscale. And so it has, a, has properties which are different from both atoms and solids. So it gives us a new range of tools to work with. I tell you what, uh, diamonds might not attract nails, but uh, they usually attract girls. They're fantastic things. <laughs> Professor John O'Connor, thanks for your time. We'll Thank catch you. up with you now. It's now December, so we might have to catch up with you next year, I'm thinking. Would That's that fine. Be? I'll see you in the new year. Lovely. Thank you so much. Professor John O'Connor, who's done a terrific job this year of bringing us everyday science, and, and not just everyday, but out of this world and really quite interesting science. A big thank you to him, and we'll look forward to catching up with him on this program next year. To NURFM.